Hey everyone, in the previous video we wrote our own service worker code, but it's not a very good idea because it doesn't efficiently use the cache. In this video you're going to learn how to use Workbox which makes it much easier to generate your own service worker code. So we're going to start by installing Workbox, generating the configuration for it and finally generating the service worker. So let's get started. To get started with Workbox I'm going to start by generating a package.json. So npm init-y generates a package.json for me. And now I can install Workbox by running npm install workbox CLI and saving it as a dev dependency. When Workbox is downloaded, you can access it from the command line in node modules.bin and then Workbox. And as a shortcut, you could simply run npx Workbox and then it's going to look for your local Workbox installation. Now let's take a look at the Workbox help screen and see what kind of commands do we have. We've got the wizard, generate sw, inject manifest, and the helper code copy libraries. Today we're only going to work with the wizard command. So let's run npx workbox wizard. And this wizard is going to help us generate a workbox configuration file by asking us a series of questions. So let's start by entering the path of the root of our web app. In our case, it's simply the current directory. And what are the files that we'd like to pre-cache? So we want to pre-cache CSS, JavaScript, and HTML files. And I'd like to save the service worker file as sw.js and the configuration file will be saved in workboxconfig.js. So that's it. Now we've got a workboxconfig JavaScript file that holds all of this configuration and you could simply run npx workbox. You can see the command here, generate sw workboxconfig.js and this is going to generate our service worker file. So that's it. Now we have a generated service worker file. So the reason why this service worker file is much better than the one we manually wrote before is because it keeps a hash of every single file that we pre-cache and this allows it to efficiently remove it from the cache whenever needed. So this is all the code that Workbox needs. If you think this is too long, you can actually save it as a command in package.json. So I'm going to copy this part without the npx and go in package.json and add a new script, call it build and I'm going to call the local workbox, generate sw and pass in the configuration file. So now I simply run npm run build and this is going to generate the service worker file every time. Now the last step is to simply register this service worker file. So I'm going to go to the index.html. I'm going to have the same code as the previous video. So let's start by making sure service worker is in navigator and then navigator.serviceworker.register the path is sw.js and then if it's successful we console log it if not we console error it that's it I want to show you something that uh, normally it's a good idea to only register the service worker on load of the page because you want to allow the page to finish loading the most important resources before it starts fetching the service worker so now let's go back to our page and reload it. So we're going to see how it loads the service worker, which is also going to load its helper libraries. And these helper libraries, .dev.js, will only be included when you're on localhost. So they give you helpful logs to see what's going on, what is being pre-cached, and they will never be included on production. And you see now, if I reload the page, you're going to see the index and the app.js are being served from the service worker, which means if I go offline and I reload the page, the app shell is still going to work. Now just two things here, make sure you are on index.html, not on slash, because the URLs have to match. And second of all, in the next video, I'm gonna show you some more advanced use cases for Workbox and how you can cache dynamic data that's coming from your API like users.json. So to recap, Workbox makes it easier to generate your service worker, and this is something you need to implement in your build step. Every time you change your HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, you have to trigger this build step again. In the next video, we're going to learn some more advanced use cases of Workbox, and most importantly, how to cache data coming from the API. I also want to tell you about my new email course, which you can find on learn.jojobrown.io. I've added a link in the description. It's a completely free email course where I teach you how to become an expert. So check out the link in the description below and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!